So Paul, we've talked a lot about the sun. We've now figured out kind of how massive it is, how big it is. We even know how far away it is, but we don't know what powers it. Where does it get its energy source from? And this is in some ways perhaps the biggest question about the sun because all the energy that's powering us comes from the sun. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had breakfast this morning yep. and that was probably either plant or animal. And if, if it, it was, was a plant, it got it from photosynthesis. If it was an animal, it ate something. That came from photosynthesis, that's I mean, right. Maybe it ate something else. I don't know if you ate tiger for breakfast. Yeah. But <laughs> I haven't eaten a tiger lately, but that's right. As you said, it, But somewhere down the food chain, right. it must have eaten a plant, and that plant would have got its energy from the sun. Yep. Likewise, the electricity that's powering our lights um, here in, the, in Canberra, that's all renewable energy. That's, that's coming right. from wind or solar. Solar, of course, is coming directly from the sun. Wind, that's still sunlight that heats up the air and causes it to move around. So everything can be traced back to that giant object in the Even sky. Even if it's fossil fuels you're using, those still came from plants that maybe 200 million years ago got sunlight. That's so right. Everything, well, with the exception of nuclear reactors, um, pretty much every, and geothermal heat, pretty much everything, any source, ultimately comes from the sun. So it'd be good to know where it's coming from, right? Yeah, so I mean, what are some of the options that we could have? What are some of the possibilities that this could come from? Well, one possibility is the sun doesn't need an energy source. It just started off really hot and it's just cooling down. So in the beginning, it was made hot and it's been radiating heat ever since. And God said, let there be a very hot sun. <laughs> And it's just been, because the sun's pretty big, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, if you heat up a rock in a campfire, it'll glow for a long time afterwards. So. Maybe the sun's just like a really big <laughs> rock <laughs> from a really hot campfire, and it's just sitting cooling down. So, well, how long then would it take to cool down? How long could it last for? Is that well, this is something we can work out. So we know from experiments in the labs on Earth, right. if the sun's mostly hydrogen, yep. you know that. That's right. Um, and if it cools down by one degree, it can liberate roughly a thousand joules of energy. So one kilogram of hydrogen equals a thousand joules of energy. Now, look. Cooling down by one degree. This by is one called degree. the specific heat capacity yep. for the physics students out there. Okay. Now the sun's big, right? There's a lot of hydrogen. It's two by 10 to 30 kilograms, so mostly hydrogen. All right. Um, and it's about 6,000 degrees. And we know that. So we could ask how long would it take to cool down from 6,000 to zero? That's right. And we kind of know it's 6,000 from looking at the black body and things like that. That's so right. we know what these answers are. That's right. So, so tell us how much longer we've got with the sun if this is what's powering it. So 6,000 degrees is our temperature now. Times 1,000 joules for every degree for every kilogram. And that's the number, times of, the number kil of kilograms. And that's you know, one followed by 37 zeros. That's a pretty big amount of energy, right? Yeah, I, I assume so. Yes, I mean, the trouble is that these numbers become meaninglessly large. <laughs> we need to compare it with something. Okay. So what we can compare it with is the amount of energy the sun radiates every second. So every second the sun puts out that much energy, which is still a lot less than the total. True. So this is three, three with 26 zeros after it, which is a lot less than 37 zeros after it. Every second. Every, but it is every second. So we measure seconds. this by looking at how much sunlight hits us. Yep. And of course, most of the sunlight misses the Earth and goes out in other parts of space. If you added all the other bits of empty space around the sunlight going into them, you can work it Moon, out. Moon, Mars, wherever, that's right. And mostly the empty space in between yes. them all. So what we can do is we can say, so you've got this much power, and we radiate that much per second. So okay. if we divide this by that, that will tell us how many seconds. So three followed by 10 zeros worth of seconds. That's a lot of seconds, right? Yeah, but it's also not a useful number. <laughs> yeah, well, I, don't, I don't think in um, gigaseconds, really. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I've got 14 <laughs> megaseconds until my next appointment. No, we don't think that. So let's convert into a unit that humans actually All understand. Right. So it's that many seconds, divide by 60 to turn it into minutes, divide by another 60 to turn it into hours, divide by 24 to turn it into days. days, and divide by 365 to turn it into years, and it comes out as about 983 years, so about 1,000 years. Isn't that a little short? We kind of know that it's been a little bit longer than 1,000 years, haven't we? <laughs> yes, yeah, so that tells us that in the next 1,000 years, the sun will be down to you know, freezing. <laughs> so, so it must presumably, if this powers it, have been hotter in the past. It would have to be... 6,000 degrees hotter a thousand years ago and otherwise yeah 12,000 degrees hotter 2,000 years ago and so on because otherwise it would have disappeared by now so back in the time when our ancestors have been chased around by vikings with big axes the sun would have been twice the temperature right now back in the times of the, the romans or the han dynasty in china it would have been so, 12,000 
and even further back to early human civilization, it would have been tens of thousands of degrees. Now, this is sounding a bit ridiculous. Yeah, that sounds also yeah, really hot and not plausible. But we can actually measure it precisely. You know, we've got okay. extremely accurate measurements of the temperature of the Earth. Um, it's rather hard to measure how much energy the sun is putting out yep. from the Earth's surface because clouds keep coming and going in the way. Yep. So if you have a spacecraft, it can measure very precisely. And so we've had spacecraft measuring how much energy the sun puts out since about the middle 1970s. That's right. There's always a new mission going to the sun. Um, or into Earth orbit, just yeah, above yeah. the atmosphere, so yeah, there's yeah. pesky clouds don't get in the way. As astronomers, we hate clouds. That's right. Um, and here is actually the brightness of the sun over the last sort of 30 or 40 years. And you see it's not constant, it has a sort of wavy pattern. And so these are kind of different ways of measuring that fluctuation, solar flares or sunspots? So the blue is the daily measurement, the, uh, the light, light blue, dark blue, the light blue is an average annual yep. thing. They're the other ones are things like solar, the number of su sunspots. Because yep. this variation is actually driven by the number of sunspots, okay. which we'll talk about um, a bit later in this course. Yep. But the crucial thing here is that the difference is only one part in a thousand. Yeah, that's not, I mean, it's not that much. And as you said, this is looking over 30 years. It hasn't really changed that much at all. Now, over the last 30 years, if it really was dropping to zero over a thousand years, it should drop by about 40 on the scale. So this is what you'd expect, this red line. So it's it goes kind of way off the way scale. There. So probably not dropping at that rate. No, it isn't. So there's what, no, no way, but, that, but that's only over a few yeah, years. Yeah, that's right. What if it happened, what, what if there was a dramatic change at some other point? Yeah, I mean, maybe the sun decided to stop cooling down for a bit. I don't know how it would do that, but... Uh, maybe it needed vacation. Now, we don't have the accurate temperature yep. measurements over very long periods of time, but you can actually work them out by looking at ratios of atomic isotopes, okay. something we'll talk about yep. quite soon, in bubbles of gas trapped in ice. So you can do an ice core either in Greenland or in Antarctica, yep. where the ice has been undisturbed for the last nearly a million years in some places. So you don't get those daily variations that, or uh, yearly variations that we saw, but we get a little bit longer variation. So this is 800,000 years in the past. And we are looking at that. Or it, it, so we're right now quite hot. Yep. And that's, but fairly recently on this diagram, like, like 10,000, 20,000 years ago, we were in an ice, ice age. age yep. um, and then there was another warm period before that, then another ice age and more warm periods and ice ages. Yep. And so, on average, the world has probably been cooler than today over most of the last million years mm -hmm. because the Earth spends most of its time in ice ages, there's only brief warm periods in between the two. But overall, it's... I mean, it's only 8 degrees, maybe, roughly? 10 degrees at most? But again, the red line is what you'd expect if the Earth... I mean, the, Earth, the Sun would have only been around for this length of time. Before that, it would have been so hot, it would have blown itself to pieces. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so there wouldn't have been any Sun back here. And it would have been much, much, much hotter even a thousand years ago. It would have been twice as hot. And so the temperature, instead of being zero, would, would have been several hundred on the scale. And you probably would have had a nice age if the sun was as much hotter as it was. So I think this theory is dead. Do you? Look, I, I think uh, in terms of extreme possibilities, this is probably not it. Now, actually, this is how one type of star does keep shining, the stars dear to your heart, which that's are the white dwarf stars. But we only like them when they really blow up, but that's another story. But a white dwarf star, which is what our sun will actually turn into in the end, is yes. just a very hot ember slowly cooling down. But they put out much less power than the sun, so they can hoard their heat for much longer, maybe even billions of years. That's right. But something putting out as much power as the sun would have to be a hell of a lot bigger than the sun to store enough heat. 